Hello everybody and welcome to my lesson about inference. If you want to do well this lesson I recommend either a whiteboard pen and marker or I recommend a piece of paper with a pen. Either way it will just help you to think through your ideas a little bit more. Let's have a look at my lesson. So in order to be successful with today's lesson, you're going to do three things. First step is to decide what to infer. The second step is to think of the clues that infer it. And the third step is to use interesting adjectives and adverbs in your description. Now the third step's not necessary to write using inference, but it will really help boost your work. So first of all, for in school we do talking partners, but I want you to think and write on your paper what you think inference means. I'll give you a few seconds to do that, 20 seconds. All right, time's up. Don't worry if you didn't quite get to the end of that. Inference is a conclusion reached on the basis of evidence. It really means that you've made your mind up for what you're reading based on what you've seen in, or what you've read in a book or what you've seen in real life. This means that you're not given the answer, but it does mean that you're given the clues and then you've used your own mind to decide using those clues and putting them together what's actually really going on. So have a look at those pictures that are on the screen now. There's a picture on the left and there's a picture on the right. Have a look at both of them and think to yourself, what's going on? When you're looking at the left screen, are you thinking that this person has been in the sun for too long? And if you are thinking that, does it say anywhere that they were sitting in the sun too long or are there clues? What could the clues be? Well, the clues are that they're looking very red, the feet, and that there is a white mark around the sandals that let them know that they've probably been out in the sun and they've been wearing sandals as well. They're also on some decking that might be where a beach is, but that could be anywhere. It's really about looking at those clues and thinking to yourself, oh, what's gone on? Again, it doesn't say that they've been sitting in the sun, but you've inferred it by looking at the picture. Take some time to look at the picture on the right now and think, what's going on there? Does it look like the girl is bored? If it does, does it say anywhere that the girl is bored? No, it doesn't. What we can see is that the girl's got her hands on her face, she's got an expression, she's not got the pencil in her hand, everybody else seems focused behind her, but she looks like she's a little bit fed up. Again, it doesn't say anywhere that she's bored. We're using our inference skills to tell what's happening. It's looking at all those clues and adding them together. Read in your own head or tell an adult near you if you've got one. What can you infer from the following? I'll give you 20 seconds to have a read through. That's a bit longer, maybe 30 or 40 seconds. Off you go. Let's read it together. There was a lengthy trail of minuscule crumbs leading from the cookie jar all the way along the floor. The trail stopped where Maddie was sitting. Around her face were more crumbs. A guilty smile lay across her face. So what's the inference? Well, the inference is that Maddie has been eating the cookies. It doesn't say that, and that's what makes it inference. If it said it, it wouldn't be inference. Instead, we've got to use the clues. The clues are that the crumbs go all the way from the cookie jar along the floor towards her. The clues are that the trail stops where Maddie's sitting. The clues are that around her face are more crumbs. And the final clue is that there's a guilty smile laying across her face. 
all those clues added up to tell you that maybe she shouldn't have taken those cookies from the cookie jar, but she's chosen to. I want you to think about these three things. For option one, the teacher stayed up all night marking and is very tired. What clues could you have for that? You could write about the second one. A child in the class forgot their lunch. Think about what clues you might have for that. Or well, number three, it's almost home time on a Friday afternoon. So first of all, decide which one you're going to do and write it down on your whiteboard or write it down on your piece of paper. Oh, I wonder which one you picked. Once you've picked it, we then think of clues to infer it. For the teacher staying up all night marking, maybe they've got bags around their eyes and maybe they're very tired. Maybe they've got a pen on the desk. Maybe they're sleeping. But you can't say they stayed up all night, but you can give me lots of clues in your sentences. What about for a child who uh, forgot their lunch? What clues might we have without saying that they forgot their lunch? And finally, what would children be like if it was almost home time on a Friday afternoon? I'm sure if you could imagine a Friday afternoon looking around the classroom, what would children be doing? You can write all those clues, maybe even talk about what the clock's doing, and where the children are looking. Once you've got one of those, you could, if you wanted to challenge yourself, use some interesting adjectives and adverbs in your description. Let's have a look at one of these together now, and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to try writing it. You could do this on the computer. There's no reason why you can't do it that way. Billy was looking at the clock at the back of the classroom. He was eagerly watching the seconds tick away. He was ready for the weekend. I quite like that. I think it's got lots of clues to say he's waiting for the end of the day on a Friday. I could improve it, though, by inserting some more adjectives. Billy was looking at the... tiny clock at the back of the classroom. And I could continue doing that, continue using adjectives, continue using adverbs as, as I've used one there to really improve that. Thank you for listening. Have a go at your own and please email your teachers and each other your inference sentences. They could be really fun trying to let people know what you're getting at. And once you've got the hang of it, then use it in your own writing. It will really help improve the way that people read your work because then they've got to do more thinking and that really helps people feel involved. Thank you for listening.